Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I am doing this rather plain model which is only really two pieces and it is the number 74 mobile refreshment canteen or caravan and it was made in 1959. Now these came out in a variety of colours cream, white, pink or silver body and the base plates were blue or green. Well, the pink body is worth the most at one selling for over $1,250, closely followed by the white or cream version. Well, the one I'm going to be doing today is the Commodore Garden silver version with the blue base. So having a look at this one, uh, the silver paint is very, very ordinary. It's a lot missing. The decals are wrecked. The axle is rusty. The interior could do with the clean and the base is a little bit chipped and play worn. The tow hook there also needs a little bit of uh, attention. But before I strip the paint and pull it apart, I'd like to match the colors. So I'm using Tamiya X14 Sky Blue and X11 Chrome Silver to repaint this model. Now in the pot, looking at the base, this sky blue looked very similar to that lovely powder blue base on the caravan. So straight out of the pot, I thought I'd give it a dab. And then I realized as soon as it's on there that it's way too dark. So I'm going to have to lighten it with some white, obviously. So using a cotton bud there, I just remove the paint that I've put on there. And I'm going to start with the white X2. And I'm going to add a little bit of the blue, the sky blue to it. Because as we all know, we add dark paints to light when we are blending paints. It's more economical doing it that way. Uh, having said that though, this blue on the caravan is a lot lighter than I perceived. And having made up the first batch there, I realized that I need to add more blue. And I'm actually running out of this blue. I don't have much at all in this pot. And uh, I did it again and again and again until I ran out of blue. But thankfully, I managed to make the almost exact color at the end of the day there. And I just diluted it with some thinners. So it's easier to spray through my paint gun. And I just put some sellotape over the top of the pot to stop it drying out and set it aside for when I need to use it. Now the base is held on by a tongue at the rear in a slot and this small little metal flared ears at the front. Now the tow hitch on this model is particularly strong and thick. So I figured it could stand the pressure of a little bit of wiggling with some pliers. So that's what I did and quite often with these types of bases it doesn't take much effort to remove them if you've got the tools. Like a kid might struggle to push it off with his fingers. But a little bit of a wiggle with some pliers and off it comes. And now you can see the inside is very highly detailed and also pretty mucky. Um, you wouldn't want to buy a burger from this van at the moment with that floor. The serving hatch has a hingeable door, which is quite fragile at the hinge points. So I decided to leave it on the model and work with it as is rather than risk breaking it by removing it. These wheels on the base are jammed well this one is in particular because as you can see the axle is rusty and it has swollen and it's locked that wheel on so first up anyway I'm going to remove the end of the axle with this cylindrical grindstone in my Dremel and then I'm going to try and pry the wheel off even though it's held firmly by the rust I'm going to use these angled tweezers to try and get in under there and lever it off. I realize I'm not doing much at all so I just force them in and because they are tapered it actually manages to lever the wheel off the axle. The second wheel is as tough as the first because uh, I mean it moves over half the axle but then it hits the rusty bit. So it was a bit of a struggle to get those wheels off but I got there in the end. Now I don't drink Coke, I drink Pepsi Max. A lot of people say, oh, Coke removes rust. So I thought, well, maybe Pepsi Max does. 
So I set that up as a little experiment and I'll come back in a minute and have a look how it's doing. Now for the paint stripping I use this poly stripper paint stripper and a subscriber suggested I put it in an old sauce bottle and that way I can be a little bit more economical with it and apply it directly to the model in small amounts and uh, accurately placed and it should save me some dollars in the long run. So I'm going to try that for the first time today. As usual I've got the rubber gloves on and I'm holding the model with these surgical uh, forceps, uh, hemostats they're called, sorry, I always get that mixed up. Now look at this, with the sauce bottle full of the paint stripper, I must admit it is almost enjoyable coat, coating them with the, the paint stripper so precisely and easily rather than tipping the whole can upside down and a big dollop landing in the disposable food container. And uh, I do believe I am using less. So thank you whoever that subscriber was. That's a great tip. And I should probably be doing that from now on. So long as the sauce bottle doesn't melt. Now after I've let this paint stripper sit for a little while. And the paint has been loosened. I agitate the paint off using the soft bristle brush. And also a combination of toothbrushes. Sometimes denture brushes also. And when most of the paint is loosened and removed, I then uh, rinse them out in the bathroom sink and continue with the toothbrush until I get most of the paint off. And uh, then I can use wire brushes, etc., or some surgical tools to remove any small scraps of paint that are left behind. Here you can see the body of the caravan has come up quite clean, as has the interior. So I'm happy with that. So that took a little while and uh, you know I was in the bathroom for quite some time there more than I would normally take but sometimes it can take longer than normal. But uh, it's all clean now so I am now back in my hobby room and I'm ready practically to wash these down with some detergent and then undercoat them and top coat them so that we can get this model back together. Now here's something that uh, Julie bought me from a local auto shop. It's a great little work light here. It's an LED powered by batteries, magnet magnetized, and it just snaps up there to the roof of my spray booth where I've put, got a steel ruler screwed up there for that purpose, for hanging magnetized objects on, believe it or not. And it works quite well. I'm using the Tamiya Fine Primer as usual and uh, I've done the interior, now I'm doing the exterior. And of course the benefit of using the Tamiya Fine Primer is it doesn't obscure any of the details on the model. Yet it does provide a great base for the top coat. So I just snap those up there to dry on those magnetized clips. And Here's a close-up of the interior. What a fantastic looking model this is. It's got cupboards, a tea urn, a clock on the wall, a, a till, some cooking implements there. But you know what? This food van has no sink. So I don't know how they're supposed to clean as they go. And I imagine that the food coming out of this van would probably be contaminated in some way and would probably make you sick. Anyway forging on. I'm now uh, re-stirring the paint that I mixed up before because it settles in different levels, the white and the blue and the thinners indeed, sort of three levels of paint there. So I mix that back up thoroughly and I'm spraying the back of the interior. That way if there's any fault with the brush and it starts spluttering or clogging up I will immediately realize and it, I won't have done any damage to the model like the back of that is not going to be seen once it's refitted. So that's why I sprayed the back first, followed by the front. I wasn't happy with the first coat. It was a little bit sandy, so to speak, if you can imagine what sandy paint looks like. So for the second coat, I'm going to be using some of this Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner, which helps the paint flatten out and become very smooth during the drying process. So this is the second coat coming up now with the addition of the leveling thinner. 
And I must admit, when this dried, it really did look good. It looked like it was baked enamel because it was so smooth and so shiny. So I'll just give you a close up of that. What a wonderful color, beautiful color Matchbox picked for the interior of this model. Now, remember I did undercoat the body? Well, it didn't work out too well with me. The first coat went on real dodgy. So I ended up stripping it back for a second time and now I'm applying the silver, Tamiya silver paint there. And I, um, again, I was not happy with this uh, finish. There's a couple of lumps in the paint. I thought they were in the paint, but on closer inspection, they were imperfections on the actual casting. So I ended up sanding them down and repainting it for a second time. Uh, to cure the paint so I can handle it without leaving fingerprints, I've taken to putting it in this little oven. Uh, I'm just showing you the temperature it got up to. I'm most surprised that it got up to over 100 degrees, which is not what I was expecting. That's on like nearly the minimum setting. Now to keep my hobby room clean, I've got this little dustpan and brush that I bought and it keeps falling off the wall and I forget where I put it. So I'm going to attach a new hook to the wall using these self-adhesive Velcro pads. But the Velcro has changed. Here you can see it's like really small mushrooms that interlock with each other. How you produce that stuff, I've got no idea. Anyway, I'm giving it a go now whilst that paint is curing in the oven. And I'm mounting this hook on the wall so that I can have that dustpan hanging there, ready and waiting for when I need it. Because at the moment, I keep putting it away in a different place every day and I can't find it when I need it. So that's going to stay there now as a welcome addition to my hobby room. Now this has been cooking for 10 minutes, so I take them out and have a look. The blue interior is absolutely wonderfully beautiful and I am more than impressed. This is what I was talking about with the silver. You can see the imperfections there on the main panel at the top there between the windows. And there's also some on the front, little tiny lumps. As I said, I didn't realize before I sprayed it, but they are metal imperfections. So um, as I said, I stripped it back, sanded it down and repainted it. Now the wheels weren't too bad. However, I'm using my little wheel cleaning rig here, which is a block of wood with some small tacks hammered in, the head's cut off. And what I do is I place the wheels over the tacks and use any cleaning medium that I have handy and a little toothbrush there. And it's great because you can scrub away merrily without them flying off and disappearing under the desk. It just happened in the past. I'll just give it a bit of a clean up before I finish with it. Now some paper towel here to dry these wheels off. Paper towel, of course, as you know at the moment is very difficult to source. That's why I'm using this tiny little two inch square because that's all I could spare. And these wheels, as you can see, they came up looking brand new. Very, very nice for 50 plus year old wheels. Now, this axle has been soaking in Pepsi Max for 24 hours and there is no difference to it whatsoever. So I give up on that and I'm going to use this little chuck, a 12 volt motor on it, stick the axle in it and grind it away with some emery paper like this. There we go. You can't see very well, but it's spinning furiously around there. And here's what we're left with, a lovely sort of almost chrome plated look to the axle, except for that end, which I do by hand. So now the axle and wheels can be refitted to the base and I do that in my shed. Now there's always a good side and a bad side on the wheels. And because this model basically has one side where people are going to be viewing it from, which is the serving hatch side, I'm going to reform the end of the axle on the far side. So if I stuff it up, it won't be seen. Now this is a, a little technique I'm using today. Uh, second time I've used it, I'm using a nail punch here with a concave dimple in the base of it. 
and I'm using this as a substitute for a second modified nail. And I can tell you what, if anyone's watching, I recommend you rush out and get some of these nail punches because look at that. You do not get any better than that. That looks like a perfect factory formed axle end. So a great tip and I recommend it to everybody. As for assembling the body and the base, very, very simple. Put that tongue in the slot and just click with thumb and finger pressure push that base on firmly. However, it didn't sit right, and I'm thinking, what have I done here? That wheel's not quite in that arc, wheel arch there. So I just move it over, and voila. Went back together beautifully, just like the real McCoy. Now, only one more thing to do, and that is to put these decals on, which I purchased from recovertoy.com, and they are very, very good decals, very close to the originals. And I thought this one was over length, but it's not. It actually wraps around the ends of the caravan. Now, I've got a bit of a distraction today, which is not good. I'm looking after my son's dog. He's away interstate, and he's got this huge dog that uh, will not leave me alone. And everywhere I go, it follows me. So I'm just putting some lukewarm water here into a shallow plate. And that's what I'm going to use to soak these decals in. I'm cutting them to size roughly and uh, making them individual decals rather than one big sheet because you don't want to bunk up. You don't want to bung the whole sheet in in one go because you'll be left with stickers floating around in the water and it'll be mayhem. So just one at a time, very carefully, and I'm starting on the front of the sign here, the front side that's going to be seen. If I stuff this up, I've still got a second one. Um, if I did it the other way around and stuffed it up, I'd only have one chance at getting this right, if you can understand that. But uh, I'm happy to say that after soaking this for less than a minute in the lukewarm water, the decals separated and went on perfectly. Great sizing by recovertoy.com. Just had to tease it into position with a little toothpick and my fingers. There was a slight crease in the middle. So starting from the middle and working my way out, I'm kind of squeegeeing out any water or air bubbles that might be there underneath the decal. And uh, I ended up having to do that again because the crease was still there, but I managed to get it out in the end. So having done that one, we've got the main decal here that goes on. Unfortunately, I forgot to press the record button when I was going. So there's no actual action of me placing it on the model, but here is the finished result. I could not ask for anything better, in all honesty. I was very, very pleased how this worked out. So now here's a quick reminder of what we started with. As you can see, this was a very drab, but well played with model. Obviously thrown in the toy box multiple times over its life and suffered as a result. Well, this is what it looks like now. The decal is not perfect on the ends. It should be extend to the base of the model. But in this instance, it's just the pinstriping that extends. However, it does look really, really cool and really, really good. And uh, the silver paint turned out great in the end. And that blue interior, I, got, I don't like to say it, but it, I think it's perfect. I do love it. I did... Uh, Tweak the tow bar there by rounding out the hole because it was a little bit oval. Apart from that, this model just basically fixed itself. Just I just steered it in the right direction. And look at those details in there. They do look absolutely beautiful. A, a, a treasure to behold. And I'm just so glad that I've saved this one from the garbage tip. Now that this refreshment van is up and running, I've managed to convince Kevin that this could be a good career move for him and he's going to be serving fresh food from this van and uh, hopefully making some decent coin. So I'm first customer today. I would like to try one of your Royale burgers with cheese, please, if you don't mind. And plenty of sauce because I do love my ketchup. The sauce particularly, I want double amounts, thank you.
Oh, I can't wait for this burger. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, please like and subscribe. And I will see you again next time on Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Goodbye. He's concerned. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>